Hi there, welcome to Xamarin University. My name is Mark Smith, and in this lightning lecture, I'm going to walk you through the steps that are necessary in order to provision a device for testing purposes. This is so that you can test your iOS applications on a real device. Now you might ask, why do we need to do that if we have a simulator? Well, the simulator is great. It's very easy to use. You can simply deploy your app right to it, test it right there on your Mac, and everything works fine. But it has its downsides. First of all, the simulator runs a different version of the runtime. Since it's running directly on your Mac, it uses the CPU and memory of your Mac. And it does just-in-time compilation for all of your assemblies. That means that the experience on the simulator isn't exactly the same as it would be on a device, and you might find that things that run fine on the simulator either don't run at all on a real device or run very poorly. And so you want to make sure to test on a device before you ever try deploying or publishing to the App Store. So how do we do that? Well, we need four basic things in order to deploy to a device. First of all, you're going to have to register with Apple for a developer account. It doesn't have to be a paid account. You only need a paid account to actually publish to the App Store or create an enterprise app. But you do need to register your account. Second, you'll need some code signing certificates from Apple. These are used to sign the application so that it's valid to run on your device. Without the proper signing, the device won't allow an application to be installed. Next, you'll obviously need an iOS device, and it will have to be plugged into your Mac, so the certificates have to be installed on the Mac as well. If you're using Visual Studio, this means that you'll need physical access to the Mac host that you're running on. And finally, you'll need a provisioning profile that ties all this together. The provisioning profile is a collection of information that ties your application to a specific set of devices that it's capable of running on. To illustrate this, let me show you a diagram. We start out with our application. Your application has a unique identifier. We call it the bundle ID. You assigned this when you either created the application or when you went into the info p list and changed the ID itself. It's typically in the form of com.companyname.appname. It also has an entitlement set. The entitlements is another property list that lists all of the capabilities and features that you want to take advantage of from Apple. So things like in-app purchases or iCloud access. And finally, your application is signed with a private key. This key is one of the certificates that you download from Apple. So the certificate contains both the private key and the public key, and the app itself is signed with the private key from the Mac. Then we have our iOS device. Your iOS device has a unique device ID as well. We call it the UDID. You can actually see this using Xcode's devices list, or if you open up iTunes with your iDevice plugged into your Mac or Windows, you can actually get the device identifier there as well. Now, all of this information is local to you, and all this information is uploaded to Apple or put into Apple's developer portal in order to create the provisioning profile. Let's see how it matches up. First of all, the provisioning profile has what's called an app ID. This identifies the application that you actually are using with the provisioning profile, and it can use wildcards to specify multiple applications. The bundle ID must match the app ID. Second, it has a list of entitlements as well, and those entitlements must match what's listed in the app. Third, the provisioning profile has the public key portion encoded in it, and this has to match the key pair that you signed the app with. And then finally, the provisioning profile has a list of valid devices that this application set can run on. And the device ID of your iOS device must be in that list. This provisioning profile is also downloaded to your Mac, and it gets installed onto your device. And so when you go to install an application on the device, the operating system looks at the list of provisioning profiles that are installed and decides whether or not this application can be installed and executed on the device itself using the information encoded in this profile. So how do we get all of this? Well, the easiest way to do this is through Xcode. We can actually request certificates and provisioning profiles directly from Xcode, and the system will just do all the work necessary for us. In fact, this is the only way to do it if you have a free Apple account, because you don't have access to the certificate section of the developer portal today if you don't have a paid account with Apple. 
So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to create just a basic application in Xcode. Go ahead and set our organization identifier and set a product name. And then let the system download it. Now, what will happen is when you first pull up the application, it will show you that you have a problem. And it'll show you that you have no teams. And so it will ask you to add an account. And when you add an account, you'll simply log in or join the Apple Developer Program right there from the dialog. You can see that I'm going to log into my account. The system will then download all of my profiles and make it so that my Mac can then run any applications for, t for testing purposes. Now, when we actually log in, it'll show me my organization, and I can click the View Details button to then go create an iOS development certificate. Alternatively, once you log in, you can actually back back up to the main page where we see the issue, and you can click the Fix Issue button, and it will go through the steps. That's what I'll do when I show this to you. And then finally, once everything's been installed on our Mac, we can select our iDevice from Xcode's toolbar, just like you do in Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio, and then click the Build and Run button. This will automatically register your device if it's not already registered in the portal. Alternatively, as you'll see when I demonstrate this, it will show you that you can just click the Fix Issue button there as well, and the system will go ahead and register your device with the developer portal, download a provisioning certificate, and allow you to then deploy your application to the device. So let's take a look at how this works. I've set up a brand new Mac, and I've installed Xamarin Studio and Xcode into this, and I've gone ahead and created a brand new empty project, which is our tip calculator, just like in iOS 101. I've added a single line into the view controller to change the background to yellow. And you can see here that I can run this on the simulator. I've not done anything else other than install the tools. And it does run on the simulator and I get my yellow background. But if I try to run this on a physical device, if I pull this down, I've attached an iPad to this computer. And if I try to run it on this device, you'll see a different experience here. Notice that I get a build error. When I look at it, it says, no valid iOS code signing keys found in Keychain. When you provision for a device, you have to have some signing certificates from Apple. And I don't have those installed on this machine. And so let me show you the easiest way to get those certificates installed. I'm going to go ahead and launch Xcode on the machine. And I'm going to say create a new Xcode project. So Xcode will do all the work of communicating with Apple servers to be able to provision a device for testing. And so I'm just going to create a single view application. Say next. I'll just call it test. I'll change the organization name. You should name this whatever your company is. We'll change the organization identifier. This would just be the first part of the identifiers for your application. So again, this is in reverse DNS notation, so it would be com dot whatever your company name is. And then we could select a language. I'll pick Swift because it's trendy and cool. And then I'm going to click Next. Most of this really doesn't matter that much. I'll go ahead and create it on my desktop. I don't really care about the Git repository, so we'll get rid of that. And it just comes up here. Now, uh, notice that I get the same error here without even trying to build. It says, no code signing identities found. And we can click this Fix Issue, and it's going to tell me that I need to sign up for an Apple ID account. Now, what they're referring to here is the registered developer account with Apple. And you have two options here. If you don't have an account right now, you can click the Join Program. If you do have one and you've already signed up, you can click Add. It doesn't have to be a paid account. You can use a free account for this purpose. However, before you can actually publish to the App Store, if that's your final intent, or sign an application to be distributed through an enterprise program, you will need to pay the registration fee. But you don't have to do it for just testing purposes. I already have an account, so I'm going to click Add. And notice it recognizes that, that this is my company uh, and everything should be set up here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now notice that I can select a development team. And so now I have Xamarin Inc. in here. I'm going to say choose. 
and it says my account already has a valid iOS development certificate because I've set up this on another machine. If you don't already have one of those, Apple would create one for you and then Xcode will download it. You can export the developer profile and import it on this Mac or you can revoke the current one and request a new one. I'm going to go ahead and say request and, or revoke and request. Okay, now notice that now everything looks okay and I can pull this down and I can select Xamarin from the team set. Now we should be able to go ahead and pull down this dialog here and scroll all the way to the top and find my iPad. And notice now I get a different error. No matching provisioning profiles found. So what it's telling me is that we don't have a provisioning profile installed on this Mac that happens to list this specific device. So remember, your provisioning profiles actually have a list of all the devices that allows the app to be installed on. When you actually deploy it through the App Store, Apple re-signs the application to be available on any device because the devices always have an Apple-signed provisioning profile installed on them from Apple. But when we're doing testing, we have to explicitly identify each device that's going to be used in the testing for this application. And we don't have that here. And so we've got to create one. So let's fix that by clicking the Fix Issue button. And that will again go up to Apple and it will register my device with Apple as a testing device. Now notice we did get an error here. Uh, does not support changes to the map features. And so I've seen this error before and there's a couple different ways that uh, we can potentially address this. One is I can come in here and switch on maps and turn maps off, go back to general, and then try again. And if this doesn't work, which is possible, and it still gives me the same error, the other thing that may be happening here is I didn't actually refresh any of the certificates that had already been created for my account. And so you can go to Xcode, Preferences, go to Accounts, and click View Details here underneath your account name. And notice that I have a development certificate, but I don't have anything else here. And so what we can do is click this little refresh button down here and get the system to refresh all of the provisioning profiles. So these are the profiles that we can use to actually distribute our application. Now when I go back, notice that my error is now gone. And so that caused it to download the provisioning profile that does have my device registered. So it did do that. It gave me the, some erroneous error about Maps features. And so if you run into some odd error when you click the Fix Issue, go and try refreshing your provisioning certificates first. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and close Xcode. We'll minimize it down here and go back to my Xamarin Studio. And let's try this again. I'm going to go ahead and click the Run to build, sign, and what should happen is it should actually deploy directly to the iPad. Notice that I didn't even have to run or even build the, the program in Xcode. I just simply need a project in order to get the system to do that whole provisioning step. So you can see that it's gone ahead and started connecting. We can see that the application is coming up. And on my device, I can see the tip calculator has been installed. Although it looks like it's not launching the app automatically, Xamarin Studio seems to think it's got a different bundle ID. Uh, we probably could open Info plist and reset it just to make sure that it was able to launch properly. But you can also just launch directly on the device by tapping the application. And here you can see it on the Mac itself. And if I exit out of here, you can see there is the tip calculator right here. Now that you've seen how you can do it through Xcode, I want to make you aware that you can also do it through the Apple Developer Portal website. This is developer.apple.com, and if you log in with a registered account, you can actually go to the Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles section. This will allow you to create developer certificates and provisioning profiles for your application and download them right from the website. This is done on your Mac, and you'll download those certificates to your Mac. The portal also allows you to register devices directly by the unique identifier. So if you don't physically have access to the device, but you'd like someone else to test your application for you, they can send you their unique identifier by looking it up on iTunes, 
and then you can enter it manually into the developer portal and generate a provisioning certificate to send to them so that they can then install your application onto, the, onto their test devices. The Publishing to iOS course has a video that walks you through all the steps that are necessary to create these certificates by hand. I hope this short lecture has been helpful in helping you to set up your device for testing. If you have any questions, you can always use the forums or email me directly at mark.smith at xamarin.com. Thank you and have a great day.